My name is Carlos Vaca, Director of Investor Relations at Fortuna. It's a pleasure to be here at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, and, and we appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about Fortuna and present the story to you. I'll be making some forward-looking statements, so please, I invite you to go to our website and take a look at our corporate presentation for more details. We're a Canadian company. Our shares trade in the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker FBI. We trade around a million shares per day. We also trade at the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker FSM. We trade around 5 million shares per day. And our market cap sits around 1, 1.1, 1 1.2 billion dollars US. Why Fortuna? Fortuna is headed by a management team a highly experienced management team that has a proven track record of delivering value to our stakeholders. We are excellent mine operators, we are mine builders, and above all, good stewards of capital. We have a diversified portfolio. We have four producing mines and a fifth in the making. We produce silver, gold, and some base metal credits out of our mine in Peru, Cayoma, which we'll go to that in a little bit. We are committed, and I want to stress this, committed to partnering with communities and governments in the countries where we operate, host our operations. We are committed to generating sustainable economic and social development. This is our global footprint. We have a mine in Peru. That was the first mine that Fortuna operated when it was incepted back in 2005, in 2006, when we started operating the Cayoma mine. We produce silver, lead, and zinc. We also have a mine in Mexico, where we produce gold and silver. And we have our newest mine in South America, the Lindero mine in Argentina, where we also produce uh, silver, but Dore. The previous two mines, we produce concentrates. And uh, with the acquisition of Rocks Gold back in 2021, Fortuna stepped into West Africa and we've strengthened our presence with the Yaramoco mine, which is also a gold producer, produces Dore, and what keeps the organization excited and energized is the build of our fifth mine. Seguela is a mine we're building in Cote d'Ivoire and we're expecting first gold pour by mid-year. This year, if you want to look at midpoint of guidance range, we'll, we should be delivering around uh, 300,000 ounces of gold plus 6.6 .6 million ounces of silver. And if you want to add the base metal component of Cayoma, we're going to be delivering between 412 to 463,000 ounces of gold equivalent. Last year, was the year where we proved to the market that the integration of the acquisition of Rose Gold was successful. Look at our quarterly numbers, our production numbers, our financial numbers, and you'll see that the business is strong. The company has never been in a stronger position to deliver value to our stakeholders. Last year, we delivered 259,000 ounces of gold, which is a 25% increase over 2021. We delivered 6.9 million ounces of silver, which is a decrease of 8% with respect to the previous year. But that is explained because the San Jose mine, which is the main contributor to our silver production, is past the peak of its reserves and grade. And of course, we also delivered some uh, zinc and, and lead production out of our Cayoma mine. So last year, if you want to include everything and convert it to gold equivalent, we delivered 402,000 ounces of gold equivalent. These are some financial metrics uh, for the first nine months of last year. We had a strong EBITDA margin of 37%. Our sales totaled around $517 million with an adjusted EBITDA of $189 million and net income of $35 million. Seguela, what keeps us excited and energized. 
This is a, a project that we launched uh, construction back in September of 2021. As of the end of November of last year, the project is over 85% complete. I want to look and explain Seguela not as a mining operation, but as a mining complex. And this is very important. Usually, mines are composed of a big deposit, and you start mining it with the different mining methods that, that might require as per that deposit, right? But in this case, we have a series of deposits, high-grade gold deposits, that will contribute to a central mill. And most exciting, some of the deposits are still open at death. Meaning, and this is very important, meaning that there is potential to expand the operation. So we're building a 3,700 ton per day mill. So with uh, the incorporation of the additional material that has been discovered into the mine plants, there's gonna be potentially two things happening. One, extending the life of mine of Seguela, which already sits at plus 10 years, and expanding the operation. This quarter, uh, mining activities should commence, as well as the uh, energization of the processing plant. In the second quarter, we'll start commissioning activities and first gold pour by mid-year. In the third quarter of this year, we should be ramping up to design capacity. I'll run you through some photos that will attest the progress we've made. And you can already, in this photo, envision the mine. Uh, here you have an overview where you can see at the, at the top center of the photo, the processing area. On the left-hand side, the mining service area where you can already see some of the mining fleet that has arrived and is on site, ready to commence mining activities. And to the right, uh, you see the high voltage substation, which is already energized. Work done at the processing plant, sack mill installation, carbon in leach tank uh, work being conducted. More uh, of the work being done at the processing area. And there you're seeing the erection of the gold room, where gold should be starting to, to be poured by mid-year. Another shot of the mining service area where you have a better look of the mining equipment and to the right, our high voltage substation. Tailings dam, complete. Water storage dam, we have over 550 cubic meters to support commissioning activities and initiation of operation. As I was saying, we have over a million ounces in reserve category, gold ounces in, at Seguela, with proven and mineral uh, infrared resources that are in the process or will be in the process, sorry, of being migrated into the reserve category as the cooperation begins. Important for you to notice to the right, you have a map of the 30 kilometer trend that we control. In blue, you have the deposits that contribute to production that hold the reserves in that uh, gray box next to, to Kula and Antena is where the processing plant will be. So going back to my co previous comment, that's what I mean with a mining complex, no? a series of deposits that will be contributing ore to the processing facility. And also outlined in that map are a series of initiatives that we're working to prove and hopefully will potentially contribute to uh, the mine, the, to the mine plan and the life of mine of the operation. Sunbird, excited about Sunbird, high grade deposit. I'm not gonna go through the grades, but please go look at our presentation. What I wanna point in this slide is that the deposit is still open beyond that black line that you see there that outlines the shell of, of where the resources are currently sitting. Lindero, our mine in Argentina. Last year, it produced 118,000 ounces of gold. It has a life of mine of 12 years. And for this year, we've guided around 96 to 106,000 ounces of gold production for, for 2023, and an all-in sustaining cost of $430, $580. 
San Jose or mine in Mexico, life of mine of two years, expected to produce between 5.2 and 5.8 million ounces of silver, plus 32 to 36 ounces of gold. Uh, last year it produced 5.8, 34,000 million ounces of silver, plus 34,000 ounces of gold. Yaramoco, two mine, two year, three year mine life, sorry, produced 106,000 ounces of gold. This year is scheduled to produce between 92 and 102,000 ounces of gold at an all-in sustaining cost of $1,550 to $710. Cayoma, or mine in Peru, produced 1.1 million ounces of silver plus uh, base metal credits. This year, uh, we're expected to deliver 1 million to 1.1 million ounces of silver plus base metals. The life of mine at Cayoma sits at five years. We have a budget of, 30 million, of $25 million plus minus in, in exploration for the year, uh, around 3.3 is in green, green fields. The balance will be in devote, allocated to our brown fields exploration programs across the board. The same uh, in Africa, we have ideas in, in Latin America and West Africa that, that need to be proven. Uh, ESG, we are not doing something special to be able to be aligned with ESG. We are now having a very robust documentation and disclosure of what we're doing in every site. Please, I, I refer you to our sustainability report. Our inaugural report was back in 2018, and you'll see that as, as we've been producing these reports, the robustness of our disclosure and what we're doing has increased. So please take a look at it, and what you're seeing here is just uh, how well the rating agencies are seeing uh, the work we're doing at all fronts. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you.